Welcome back to the strategy course and to the topic that we are going to be discussing today, which is uh, global industry. So the idea behind this is to complement the discussions uh, on uh, local industries and what happens uh, in terms of the context of a, a company and go beyond that and get into an understanding of location advantage and the uh, ways to analyze this. So what we start is with a, a very simple definition, which is location advantage. A location supports a company uh, better than alternative locations. It's if you want something very similar, parallel to the story of a competitive advantage, a company is better than other companies uh, in satisfying the needs of customers. Again, it is relative. We are looking at different places and see whether one place is going to be better for companies to be located there than other places. Uh, from here, we go into uh, different ways of understanding location advantage. The first one, which is if you want a very traditional one, is understanding the country context. Most companies don't choose where they uh, start operations. For the most part, founders uh, create the companies in which uh, uh, they have basically grown up or uh, they know that uh, it's going to be good for them. It's rare that a founder, an entrepreneur, will move to uh, another uh, location or in some cases uh, even another country so the reality is let's try to understand what is happening with the context in which we're already operating and from there uh, they can take them international with this um, the idea is try to identify different dimensions and organize them in a way so that uh, it's easier to uh, be able to eventually compare different locations uh, but we start with the traditional framework uh, pastel uh, it has different uh, ways of uh, organizing the different letters, but the idea is get the country context, separate it into different dimensions, and then try to understand how it is that it is affecting companies. And here there are two different things that are important to think about. The level of the quality of those different dimensions and the dynamics of the dimensions. So what we are interested in is not only in understanding, okay, we are in a country, this is the level of GDP, this is the geography, this is how far it is from other centers, this is what the population looks like, the level of education, but actually try to go deeper and see what is the quality that we can find in factors of production that can support the advantage of companies. The logic behind analyzing global industries uh, and in this particular case, the context uh, in which the compare operates is trying to understand, can I rely on my context for better factors of production so that I can specialize in those areas in which I'm really good. That's, the, that's why there is an important story of analyzing, identifying a quality in different dimensions. And then, yes, it's great. We are today here, but what's going to happen in the future? What are the dynamics? Are these different uh, dimensions of the context? Improving, are they maybe going to be uh, uh, not uh, being as good in the future so that then we can later on analyze differences across countries and if we are thinking about taking the company abroad, start comparing those differences. With this, we take this as, uh, for the most part, given it affects the con country context, affects all companies not only within the industry, but across industries. And the logic here is understanding, is this a good place to be in, in general, regardless of the industry? With that, uh, then we get into relative uh, uh, comparisons. Uh, we start with this, and then we get into differences across countries. And here we can go back, if you want, to uh, some traditional theories, uh, uh, starting with the concept of absolute and relative advantage. The idea here coming from uh, economics is that some countries uh, are going to be better than others. Uh, and the logic is, well, if that is the case, if you have certain endowments, population uh, is better educated, land is more productive for particular agricultural products, there is more capital and machinery to undertake particular uh, activities, then companies should specialize, the country actually should specialize in uh, creating products uh, that take advantage of these uh, conditions and then exchange with countries that have different conditions and basically they can specialize in different goods and uh, 
we end up with international trade. Original idea went all the way back to Adam Smith. Uh, the idea was focusing on absolute advantage, what you are really the best. Uh, but then the question was, well, what if a country is really much better than all the other countries? That's a relative advantage. Well, nevertheless, you should be still focusing, specializing on the areas in which you are relatively better than other countries. Let others specialize, even if you can do things better, because we have a limited, if you want, level of resources. Uh, we can just take advantage of what we are better at in this location and then move things around. This theory was a country level theory. It was a story explaining international trade. It didn't really get much into why particular companies uh, will be better than others, uh, but it's kind of, if you want, the uh, basis for understanding why companies in particular locations tend to be better in certain industries, in certain activities, and why they should then rely on others for other activities. And as a result, everybody to some extent is going to be benefiting from uh, these exchanges. Then the next thing that we got, well, yes, this explains differences and it explains what there is trade, but uh, there was a realization that, well, it's not, trade is not only happening between countries that are really different in terms of endowments, but in some cases it happens uh, between countries that are relatively similar. So why is this? How is it that we have this conundrum that we have an argument that it's a logical argument, specialized in something you're very good. At the same time, the reality wasn't really fitting this. And then it was another model that was developed uh, in the middle of the 20th century that argued that, well, it's not only differences that matter, but also uh, proximity. Countries, economic activity is going to matter in terms of how attractive that particular country is. And therefore, if the country is much bigger because there is much more economic activity, because the population is bigger, because you have consumers that have a much higher levels of income, there is going to be much more trade going to that country. So the idea was, to some extent, if you want as a metaphor of gravity, bigger masses are going to be attracting each other and especially if they are closer to each other. And this was the idea that, yes, I can trade with a, a country that has a very different uh, uh, factor endowment. However, if it is really far away, it's going to be costly to move things around and maybe I just trade with the country that is nearby. And that was the story of, if you want, the logic behind later on or all these economic agreements uh, in which countries that were neighbors started basically producing barriers to trade and creating much bigger economic zones. Everybody was going to benefit and nevertheless the trade was already occurring so when, why don't we just accelerate this? Going deeper into this, then it was the other, if you want, uh, argument, which was more uh, coming from international business rather than international economics, that look, this explains trade, how do we explain foreign investment? Why is it that companies choose certain countries to invest and other, not others, and especially what is the process of internationalization? The idea here was that it's not only how attractive a country is, but also the story of uh, how similar it is to the conditions in which I operate. And here it was not a story of differences in endowments, but being able to transfer resources, capabilities, the products to countries in which customers will be similar to the ones I already uh, serve. And the idea here was distance differences, yes, in endowments and international trade specialization is good. However, uh, if I'm trying to sell uh, something to other customers, what I want is really countries that are really similar so I don't have to make much in terms of adaptations to the needs of those customers. So we are playing with differences, differences in both sides. And uh, in the sense of differences, specialization are really good. At the same time, we have to take into account the cost of going to other places, the difference, the distances with other places. And that basically, to some extent, undermines the logic of specializing. Sorry, not a specialization, but trading with faraway countries. So it's an com interesting combination of specializing something that you're really good at, and at the same time, try to basically sell to consumers that are similar. How do we solve this conundrum? Very simple. The specialization factor differences is a factor story. It is an input story. 
the uh, for investment story is much more a story of similarities is trying to sell. What do you buy? What do you sell? That's to some extent if you want a, a solution to this conundrum. Now, the next thing is, yes, this is good, but where are these location advantages coming from? Why is it that some countries have particular conditions that others don't have? And from there, we get into the analysis of the uh, sources of location advantage, the diamond model. Here, the argument was, look, we can use a framework to understand why Countries in particular locations are better than others, and they tend to be exporting. And the logic of this was a story of innovation. If I have certain conditions that enable companies there to be highly innovative, they are going to be specializing and being better than other companies in other locations, and therefore they are going to end up exporting a lot. If you want a relatively focused on manufacturing, but nevertheless, an interesting story on trying to understand why is it that some locations are better than others. From there, we have four forces, factor conditions, demand conditions, related and supporting industries, and the firm strategy, structure, and rivalry. With, the, again, logical how, logic behind it, which is innovation. So let's go a little bit deeper. And here, the story is understanding why some companies are better than others in terms of innovativeness. How does this happen? Well, because they can rely on the argument we had before on certain factor conditions. There are certain specialists in the country. I can basically get better uh, factors uh, and this enables me to just specialize and be better on the areas in which I am. I also have a particular demand conditions. I have lots of really sophisticated demanding consumers who are going to be pushing me to try to do things much better. And therefore I have to auto innovate others. I also have the story that I can also rely on other companies. It's not a factor condition, but there are companies in other industries related and supporting industries that are also really good. They are highly innovative. So, hey, I can use their machinery. I can use their services so that I'm going to be much better because I concentrate in one really good ad and then I rely on others, which are also really good. And then finally, the fourth element is a strategy, structure and rivalry which is an argument that if there is a lot of competition in a particular location, that's going to be good for innovation. Might not be good for profitability because companies have to outcompete each other, but in terms of the companies that survive, they are going to be so much better because they are trying to out-innovate each other. So with these four different dimensions, we end up with some locations in which companies in general are better, i.e much more innovative than companies in other locations, they do have a location advantage. Other factors that complement this, the government, and the government plays a very large role in supporting all the uh, diamond, the, the, for different forces, by providing the incentives, by providing the institutions, by providing the uh, rules and regulations that enable easy transactions and facilitation of uh, exchanges. And at the same time, provides the basic infrastructure, both hard roads, airports, uh, and the soft infrastructure, uh, institutions, education, things like that, that enable everybody to do uh, much better. And then finally, companies are going to benefit from this, and it is their decision, and it's their focus on trying to be much better than others, even be motivated to improve them, that is going to drive not only, and this is important, their own uh, innovativeness, but also the innovativeness within the value chain. Underlying this, and if it, this is one of the biggest drivers, is not only one company, but a set of companies that work together, i.e. clusters. What we are going to find here is that within the value chain of the industry, different companies are going to be supporting each other, and at the end we have an if you want ecosystem of highly innovative companies which are pushing each other and at the same time are supporting each other and as a group they are going to be much better than companies in other places i.e they are going to have a location advantage so that's uh, the argument and that's those are the ideas things to remember location advantage a particular location is better than other locations at supporting the competitiveness of companies all of this is relative how do we identify this try to go deeper into the logic of a specialization. And this is, if you want, the biggest uh, driver of uh, today's discussion. 
And from there, try to go deeper into the story of uh, identifying different dimensions. We can use PESTEL as one framework. Focusing on quality and dynamics, we can also use uh, the logic of specialization and differences across countries. And then there the uh, set of frameworks, which is the Diamond Framework, which is a story of competition, being better, trying to out co compete each other. And the logic here is innovation as the driver of uh, companies that are highly competitive on a global scale in comparison to companies in other places, clusters being in those collaborations, competitions that enable all of them to benefit. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this. Bye-bye.